It's time that we talk about 3D printing in architecture. Fairly recently, I got my first 3D printer called Ender 3 V2, and today I'm going to share a complete step-by-step -step process on how to prepare and optimize your files for printing. I'm also going to share some important information about the printer that you need to know. And lastly, we're going to print a Swiss facade, which is a grasshopper tutorial that we did a while back. Stay until the end to see the final result. Before we start preparing the file, it's important to know what is the size of our print bed. In other words, what are the size limits in our model in X, in Y, and in Z directions. For this printer, uh, the print bed is 235 by 235 millimeters and the height is 250. So we need to take into consideration these uh, dimensions once we start to optimize the 3D model. Here is our model in Rhino. The first thing that I want to do, I want to inspect the file. I want to go to units, make sure that we're working the, in the proper units. This is millimeters. Let's see how wide it is. It's 238 millimeters. So if you remember, the limits of our printer are 235. So we need to fix this. But before that, let's inspect and see if this uh, file is optimized for 3D printing. 3D printing optimization means that the file is completely closed, that there is no naked edges in the model. So the best way to check this is to simply select the model and type show edges. In this case, you will see that it says here no naked edges and no non-manifold edges, which is great. And that's what we want to see. If you have something like this, let's say, if I take a look at the surface, I'm going to do extract surface. And now if I take a look at this and if I go show edges, you will see now that I have 70 naked edges. And if I click here on zoom, you will see exactly where that happened. And now we can see that we need to connect this surface, right? So all I need to do is to fix it is to join it back. So I would select this and this and I would click join. Now, once we check this again, if I go show edges, everything works fine. This is number one. When I prepare files for this, I like to have this print bed size in my model. So I would simply create this box. I would go, for example, 235 by 235 and then again here and here. And the height is 250. Okay. And I would simply do extract wireframe and that would give me my, my border, okay? So now if you take a look at this, let's just change the color here. It doesn't mean that it will not be able to fit because we can just put it like this and then we can rotate it and it would fit. But this means that the layers, the printing layers would go in this direction. So the printing head will print like this. That's why I usually like to have all of my layers in 90 degrees. So that's why we would rotate this and we would bring it back like this. I would position this in the middle. So let's go like this to find the middle, middle point. Here it is. And then I would simply go and position the whole thing in the middle here. Okay. And now you can see that I just need to cut maybe a couple of these elements to have everything fit. Let's do that. I'm going to create a line from here to here. And I'm going to mirror this on the other side as well. And let's use these curves to make a small cut. Let's do Boolean split. And now we have the model done. Okay. And now this model would fit perfectly with our printer. Another thing that I wanted to do, I wanted to test a couple of layer thicknesses. So for that, I'm going to just take just one piece of this uh, i will take again probably yeah from here let's do one line from here to there and one more from there to here okay and this will give me just one piece of this of this facade that i want to test in multiple thicknesses let's make sure that we have this suited and let's do boolean split and now we have this inner piece that we're going to be using to test different uh, printing thicknesses now it's it's time to export the export process is pretty simple you just need to select the file go to file export selected and choose uh, your folder and in this case make sure to choose stl this is very important 
click on STL layer width that's we want and just click on default options and you exported this one successfully and then the second one simply again file export selected and i choose the same folder we're gonna save facade v1 save okay and we're done now it's time to go to add the software this is ultimate cura software uh, i like this one pretty much because you have a lot of options that you can modify when it comes to your printing settings but there are other uh, slicers on the market such as Prosa slicer which is also quite good i prefer this one because i'm using it more often all right now let's import the file in cura let's click here and select our file we're gonna select facade v1 and you will see that our model is gonna be imported here you can rotate you can see that everything looks good if the model is oversized you will probably see something like this for example if it goes out of the bounds you will see that it's not going to be uh, visible in color this means that you need to position it properly okay so once you have it positioned properly this means that the file is good to be printed and i wanted to show you a couple of options that you need to pay attention to here on the top you have profile and you have standard quality you have super quality and low quality. We are going to test uh, all three of these options and we're gonna test these on those smaller pieces. If I import another one, this one, this is the V1. I'm going to use and I'm going to print three different pieces uh, like this with three different colors with three different settings. So I wanted to show you the difference. You will see how it looks in super quality, 0.12 millimeters, then standard 0.2 and low quality, which is 0.28. Uh, right now, we're going to adjust the settings for this guy. In this case, we're going to print standard quality 0.2. And here, you don't need to worry about too many of these options. So all you need to worry about is the quality. You want to make sure it's 0.2 as it says here. You also want to make sure that the infill is either 20 or, or 10%. This is usually more than enough. I'm going to show you in a little bit what this means. Then we have the speed, which is around 50 millimeters per second you can of course increase the speed but if you increase the speed the quality is going to suffer and the last thing that i wanted to show you is the support the support is something that you need to consider when you have situations where there is overhangs in this case you can see in red color that here we have layers which are going to be more than 70 degrees so this means that this may not print very well if you don't I include supports you just want to click generate support and of course for the temperature you want to adjust 220 degrees for this particular pla material that we're going to be printing when all of this is ready you can simply click on slice and now the program is gonna create all of the layers which are going to be used by the 3d printer machine once slicing is over you will see here on the bottom it says it will take us 12 hours 55 minutes it will take 87 grams or 29.2 meters of our material. So now a cool thing you can do, you can click on preview here and you'll be able to see, for example, on the right side here, I have this handle and I can see how my layers will be printed on the inside, okay? So you can see how it's gonna start from the bottom and it's gonna go all the way up. Let me show you what these guys mean. If you can see these orange uh, levels, these are the infill support. So now it's set to 10 and it's set to try hexagon, but you can modify this. You can change this, for example, to cubic. And when you click slice, now you will have a different pattern on the inside. There it is. Now you can see that the pattern looks a little bit different and you can really experiment with these different infill pattern. Regarding support, you can see how we have this in blue layer. You can see these guys. And these are the supports. You can click here on support and you can see that we have the support density here is set to zero. And you can see when you zoom in that we just have one outer layer. And this is because these supports are actually going to be removed when you finish the printing. So we're just using them so that they can create this kind of landing for these layers to print on top. So that's the, the only purpose. And that's why we don't need to worry about having the support density at all now when you're happy with how all of this looks like you can simply save this to your sd card and put it in the 3d printer if you'd like to know more about this topic and what are some of the best resources like 3d models for 3d printing or communities and forums for 3d makers you can check this list on our patreon page by supporting us on patreon you're helping us create even better and more interesting videos 
All right, so now let's take a look at this printer exactly and let's see which parts are the most important ones and what do they do. So here we have the filament. This is the actual material that we're going to be printing with. Uh, it's called PLA and it has 1.75 millimeters of, of thickness. I have a couple of uh, other filaments here as well, which are all the same thickness, but just wanted to show you that you can get them in many different colors. And uh, it's really important to keep the filament in these kind of like dry boxes, vacuum boxes, because uh, if the filament is too much on the, on the, in the air, it will get, get moist. And then uh, when the moisture goes into the uh, heated end, that's gonna cause the problems and your prints will not be uh, very good. So make sure to keep them dry if you have extra filament. And in this case, this filament goes, now you, you can't really see here on the back, but this is called the extruder. And this is the machine that actually uh, takes this filament and brings it uh, forward, right? So it takes it uh, forward and brings it back when needed. The filament is then going through this tube, which is called Bowden tube. And this Bowden tube is then gonna go here, which is called, this is the part that is called hot end. Uh, and, and this is where the, the actual uh, filament is being melted then it comes down on the bottom uh, at the so-called nozzle. This is the nozzle that is 0 0.4 uh, millimeters in thickness. You have different uh, variations, but this is for this printer. This is the sensor for the Z-axis. This is actually allowing us to make our printing bed completely flat. It's really important that you have your bed leveled because if uh, your bed is not leveled, then your prints are gonna have problems. Here you can see these are knobs, which are, when you, when you move these knobs, you actually control uh, how uh, this plate is gonna be bent. So you can bring this up or down, and you can do this all through software, when you actually have the particular firmware installed for the printer. So this is the print bed, as we mentioned earlier, you can see that I printed a, uh, some kind of handle here so I can move it back and forth. I actually printed a lot of additional parts, for example, I printed here this uh, this handle. I also printed a couple of holders uh, in the back and also some holders here for the filament. Uh, and let's not forget the motors. The motors are the most important ones because they're actually moving the whole structure. So we have one motor here, which is gonna be for the Z and this one here. And then we have the one which is gonna be for uh, this axis and then one in the back, which is gonna be for this axis here. So that's how this is moving and then of course, this part is also moving when you start printing, you will see. And that's how the printing actually works. So when I want to start printing, usually what I do, I take one of these cans of compressed air and I spray it a little bit on the surface. I want to make sure that there is no dust particles at all because they can damage the print. Uh, and additionally, I use uh, these kind of cotton uh, that uh, goes with isopropyl alcohol, which is a substance that you can get in pharmacies which are used for cleaning the surface and cleaning the, uh, the plastic if you have some residual materials there. Once you clean that up, uh, you can additionally get a glue stick like this. And what it does, it doesn't actually get sticky right away. It actually gets sticky once the bed is heated. The bed is usually heated uh, on 60 degrees uh, Celsius. So when it gets heated up, that's when the, the stickiness will actually start. And this is really good because you want your bed to be sticky when you start at first layer. So let me recap uh, the temperature that this nozzle is gonna have is gonna be 220 uh, degrees Celsius. The bed is gonna be 60 degrees Celsius. So when you start printing, uh, do not touch the nozzle with bare hands. Do not touch this because it will be super, super hot. So I'm going to start it now. You will see that it will turn on. You will see also, you will hear the fan noise. And now I want to first create the, the mesh bed, the, the auto level. That's what we do with this probe. So I'm going to go here and I just want to start uh, this uh, sequence so you can see how that uh, looks like. Here, here it is. The probe is homing, which means it, it's, it is coming to the center of the printer. And now it's gonna uh, wait until we have enough heat. This means that we're gonna wait until I think uh, 60 degrees uh, Celsius until this is heated up. And then we're going. Then the probe is going to start uh, touching uh, and measuring uh, the distances from this small point here. The bed got heated uh, at 60 degrees, and now you will see how the probe is actually working. 
we have here the setup of 36 points. So the probe is actually touching uh, a grid which is 6 by 6. So you can see how it's going from left to right or from right to left, depending on if you're looking at this from the screen. So now it's going uh, 6 points in this direction and then 6 points in the direction below. And it's actually touching one uh, individual point three times. Then it's averaging what is the distance between those points. And that's how at the end we can get very good reading of what the actual print uh, bed looks like, if it's leveled, if it's not leveled. And that way, when you start a new print, if there is any kind of uh, places where that are not even, that are like a little bit, you know, crooked, uh, it means that the software will recognize this and then the printer will correct that based on the input that they got from this sensor. So this is how it looks like and, and then when all, it's all finished you will see an image that looks uh, something like this. And this just means that now we can click save and we can apply this mesh for our next print. Once we have the file ready, we can go to media, we can choose here the correct file and then see if that's the one. And then all we need to do is just click on the print and it will start. When it comes to the printing process, usually I'm very close to the printer and pay attention to the first couple of layers. If the first layer is good and sticks well to the surface, you're good to go. However, I wouldn't recommend that you leave your 3D printer completely unattended because there is always a small possibility that something might go wrong. Modern 3D printers are generally safe, but the biggest concern is that the nozzle might clog up and having the heat up to 220 degrees can cause your printer to catch fire. To be honest, I was using my 3D printer sometimes overnight, but then once I saw these videos online, I changed my mind quickly. I love the smell of napalm in the morning. Yeah, and one other thing to keep in mind is that this printer will produce a lot of fan noise. It's not too bad, but if the fan noise is bothering you, maybe try moving it to a different location or using some kind of cover to dampen the sound. Okay, so the printing process is done. After 12, 13 hours, we have the result. And now I'm gonna show you how to get this thing off the print bed. Usually what I do, I use uh, this spatula, uh, but you know, you can try taking this off manually, but uh, it's very sticky now because we use the glue, if you remember. So what I usually do, I take this and then I take something to kind of something like this to bump it. So just go like this and just a couple of times and it should get off easily. So there it is. That's the process of getting, uh, getting the print off. So we previously created a couple of test files. These are uh, those tests. You can see how they turned out in different colors with different filaments. If you notice here, you will see that they have these kind of supports and I showed you in the file how that looks like. And now this is how uh, that uh, looks like when it's printed out. So all you need to do is take a set of pliers like this, take the, the middle part, just slightly bend it and it's over. That's how easy it is to take the supports off. Okay, so once we took the supports off, uh, I just wanted to share with you the differences between these three. This first one in yellow is 0 0.29 uh, millimeters of thickness of the layer. Uh, the second one is 0 0.2 uh, and the first one is 0 0.12. We wanted to kind of test and see which ones would, would work the best for our uh, main uh, model. And we chose the second one uh, in white because it turned out to be like the best option for the time needed to print and also the quality. Okay, and here is the final result of our model. This is the Swiss facade uh, that we did in Grasshopper previously. You can also check that tutorial. And uh, we wanted to share with you the whole process of how uh, you can turn your 3D model into something real, like, like this 3D printed model. Uh, let us know what you think about the whole process, if there's anything that is not clear, if you have anything to add, or maybe even ask us about some potential future uh, 3D prints that you'd like us to do. Take care.